and without saying a word, she nods, puts her hands on my chest and pushes me straight to the bed. What's up everyone, my name is Arnell Brown. What's up My Life Japan? Uh, I am from San Francisco, California, USA and I have been in Japan since 2005, about 13 years and some change. I'm an English teacher. I've been teaching English since 2002 and teaching English in Japan since 2005. Actually, when I came to Japan or before coming to Japan, I didn't have any impression at all. The only thing I had was the image of Fuji, just boom, and with the snow cap, and that was it. Before coming to Japan, we have this image that maybe Japan is very technologically advanced, but then we still do things that we don't do in America anymore, like we're still using fax machines, the copy machine at work is always busted. I can never get it working right. There's a lot of things that we don't have that we have in the States or elsewhere. Like I've heard of, I'm an English teacher, so I heard of things like smart boards and boards that you can write on that can be, whatever you write on the board can be downloaded into a computer or into a database. We don't have that here. Uh, I've heard of these boards, they'll, there'll be a printer attached underneath and you can just, hit a print button and whatever you wrote on the board can be printed. We don't have that here. So a lot of these things that we don't have still shock me. Safety, safety. I'm, I'm still shocked that it's, it's hella safe here. Um, in the 13 years I've been here, I've only been in trouble like three or four times. I originally came to Japan on jet and the jet orientation, they were like, don't go to Kabukicho, go, don't go to Kabukicho. And all of San Francisco were like, you know what, we're gonna go check out Kabukicho. It can't be that bad, right? It's Japan. Oh my God, I got into some trouble. So that night, we were on our way back to the hotel. It's about 11 p.m. And this Nigerian dude walks up to us and he's just like, hey guys, you guys like hip hop? And we're like, yeah, we like hip hop. And he's like, come to my club. We'll give you a free drink, we got hip hop. But we got there, it wasn't a hip hop club, it wasn't a dance club, it was some skebe. Oh God, it was like, uh, what was it? It was like, uh, oh man, like a lot of women and a, uh, a place for salary men to, uh, to meet up uh, foreign women. Uh, we got there, there was eight ladies and four dudes. And uh, we get there, we sit down, all the ladies get water, the four dudes, me included, we get a beer, and then we get handed a bill of Ichiman Sanzen Yen, and we're like, yo, 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 what's going on? What is this? Oh, it was a big, big mess. Uh, <laughs> my friend, who's El Salvadorian, went to go talk to, there were 13 Nigerians running this club. He went to go talk to 12 of them, and left me with another guy who called himself Fresh James, who wanted to fight me for <laughs> various reasons, don't know why. Somehow, some way, I convinced him not to fight me. I told him that my name was Arnell Brown, and I told him that I was black from America and that I don't fight my own people. And because he's black too, that, and that we're brothers, we shouldn't fight. And somehow, some way, he was just like, you're my brother? I'm like, yeah, man. And he's like, okay, come here. And he gives me a hug and walks me out the door. Five minutes later, my friend from El Salvador was like, I got this, man, I got this. And somehow, some way, we got out of that trouble without paying. But man, I was sweating it. That was the second night I was in Japan. So uh, yes, it's safe. But besides that and some trouble that I got into last year, that was basically it. Like two times, three times in the 13, 14 years I've been in Japan. Another crazy story was uh, when I came on jet, uh, in those days, we used to have uh, inter-prefectural training courses. And all the new employees had to have a three-day training course in a hotel in the prefectural capital. So I lived in Kochi. What's up, Kochi? And um, somehow, all the jets got placed in one hotel. But because that hotel was fully booked, I couldn't get into that hotel. So my boss puts me in another hotel called the Green Hotel. And um, this hotel doesn't have any peepholes on the door. 
and I got in about six o'clock at night, just finished taking a shower, and um, I was wearing a tank top. All of a sudden, I get a knock on the door, boop, 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 boop. And uh, though I'm a teacher, I'm an American, so I have tattoos. I have a tattoo on the back of my neck and on my arm over here. Get a knock on the door and I'm thinking, who can this be? Must be the front, staff, front reception staff. Maybe I forgot to sign something. Maybe I forgot to give them some information and they're just here to check on me. So I open the door and there's this lady about 18, 19 years old, about this tall. And without saying a word, she nods, puts her hands on my chest and pushes me straight to the bed. Honey, this is way before I met you, so don't be mad at me. So this lady pushes me to the bed and she starts telling me, Masaji, Masaji, Masaji. And I'm like, and at those days I couldn't speak any Japanese at all. So I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she's like, you called me. And I was like, no, I didn't. I didn't call you. And she's like, you called me, Masaji, Masaji. And I'm like, no, 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 I didn't call you. And I'm like, quick thinking, I said, if I called you, call me right now to prove that I called you. So she gets on the phone and she dials and she gets the guy who she's supposed to meet. The guy tells her, oh, I'm in room 304 and I was in room 314. And she's like, oh, okay, I understand. And she, she rolled on out. I love Japan, uh, been here a long time, probably gonna be here uh, a lot longer. Uh, but just one last story, uh, a bad experience with a local Japanese person. It happened actually last year around Christmas time uh, I ride the Hanzamon line a lot. Um, I work in the day and I also work at night. I'm always w working all the time. And um, I was watching YouTube and had my earphones on. And from across the way, this Japanese guy, uh, I wasn't paying attention, just watching my phone. He, he taps me on my knee and I look up and um, I had to pull off my earphones. And he, uh, he said something strange to me and it caught me off guard. In perfect, clear English, he goes, stop taking video of me and I was like what and I kind of laughed like Phew. and I'm like what what are you talking about man and he's like stop taking video of me and I'm like and naturally because I am who I am I said are you crazy man I'm not taking video of you leave me alone and because I said I triggered something when I said are you crazy man he's like now you must apologize. And I'm like, apologize for what? And he's like, for taking video of me and calling me crazy. And I'm like, dude, you need to sit down. It was an uncrowded train, but this guy was like right up in my face. And like, he's like, you must apologize. And I was like, dude, please sit down. And he's like, you must apologize for calling me crazy and videoing me. And I'm like, oh my God. And like, I do martial arts and I was just like, and I'm from the hood, and like, but I'm conflicted because this is Japan and I know how things go. Like, as soon as I do anything, it's my bad. It's my fault. It's my butt that's gonna be thrown in the jail or being sent home. And so half of me is like, I could really mess you up, dude. And the other half of me is like, oh, I better talk this guy down because if I don't, then it's my butt in trouble. So he's like, you must apologize, you must apologize. And I'm like, please sit down. And he says again, you must apologize, you must blah, blah, blah. Uh, please sit down. Finally, third time. And this time I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Shake my hand, please, and sit down. And he was like, no. And I was like, oh my God, I'm really going to mess you up. And so I start looking at him from toe to head, head to toe. And I'm like, okay, this dude is wearing a mask. He's wearing some New Balance. He's wearing this and that. Where are my exits? If he swings, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna get my bag and mess this guy up? But then finally, the fourth time, I was just like, I apologize. Now, I don't want any trouble. Shake my hand and please sit down. And somehow, I don't know what happened in his head, but he didn't shake my hand. He didn't say anything, but he went back to his seat and sat down. And I was like, ha. Oh. <laughs> so the crazy thing is, uh, that guy spoke clear, perfect, the cleanest English and I don't know why he he singled me out in that crowd he was like naname hidari like diagonally across not even in front of me like like to the left of me yeah across the way yeah wasn't aimed at him I was just watching uh I was watching pro wrestling <laughs> what's up WWE <laughs> anyway I was watching like that yeah wow. <laughs> he was like he was like a 
trouble. Yeah, yeah. Like my my when I told that story to my to my coach and everyone, they were like, yeah, he was, he was, he was looking for trouble, but like, he was trying to provoke trouble. So like, if I make the move, then you know, like, it's on me, right? Right. So.